Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Del K. Brereton. This is the Show Institute. But the channel today is talking about the real spiel kind of stuff today. How are you guys doing? I hope everybody is well. Um, I haven't been on here for a while, but um, I'm back and I'm always back with something to talk about, something to say, something to reflect on, something to make you think, something to make you go, hmm, something to talk to your, 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 your kinfolk about. And today, I'm here to let you know, Caitlin Clark is the new face of sports in America. Oh. You thought it was, you thought it was going to be Bronny James. You thought they're going to still be hanging on to LeBron. You think it's going to be the NBA. <laughs> Let me explain to you some things. Let me talk to you. All my good friends. Oh, look at everybody here. Come on now. Good to see you, brother. Um, Caitlin Clark has done what no other woman has done ever, ever. 18.9 million people decided to watch the NCAA Women's Championship game. Like, bro, I ran home to watch it. Me, I don't even watch women's basketball. Listen, in my in my basketball groups on Facebook, come and join us. B-Ball Rant on Facebook, we'll let you in. We don't even talk about women's basketball. We have, we have no interest in women's basketball of any kind. Unless we see some phenomenal little 10 year old, maybe some, some uh, I, I've been watching that girl from North Carolina, LA fitness girl who's been just lighting people up, but normally we don't talk about basketball for women. Caitlin Clark has made women's basketball sexy again. She's made it the topic of stars. She's she's brought it to every level. She's made everybody interested in it. And the number one thing that she has done is she has made basketball a conversation about race again. That's what she's able to do. Not since Larry Joe Bird has basketball been a racial conversation in America. That's right. Larry Bird was able to wake up the whites in middle America, or America, in upscale America, and they were able to give them, a, he was able to give them a champion. Somebody who could win championships, somebody who was arguably at the time one of the best basketball players in the world, and somebody who was good old-fashioned American. Good old-fashioned American pie from Indiana. He was a good old boy from America. Let me hear what you got to say early. That was hoping and praying she was going to win, but she did take it like she, yeah, listen, Caitlin don't have to win to win. It's another thing. Caitlin won even though she lost the game. Caitlin won even though she lost the game. Listen, nobody's talking about South Carolina going undefeated. No one's talking about uh, Stanley being the best coach in America in any in any division, whether it be college, men's, women, whether it be pro. Listen, her, she's the best coach, period, in America. L look at her record over the last three years. The lady doesn't have five losses to her name. She's not the story, though. Normally, she would be the story. Normally, the Gamecocks, their fantastic six foot seven Brazilian center, uh, their fantastic point guards, their shooters, their freshmen, normally, they would be the story. But they are not the story because Caitlin Clark has been the triggering agent for the number one motivator in America and that motivator is called race she has been she is good enough that white Americans and I'm sorry I'm sorry this is not my issue America this is yours this is not this is not me who made 18.9 million people watch Caitlin Clark this is your issue this is your rallying cry so I I have to I have to mention it I'm not talking about race 
you guys are talking about race. You showed it to us that Caitlin Clark has caused more people to watch women's basketball in the history of the sport, in the history of the sport. Not Brittany Griner, Duncan six foot eight woman, not Lisa Leslie, not Cheryl Swoops, not Teresa Weatherspoon. No, 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 not even Angel Reese. Uh-uh, not Juju Watkins, a bad point guard from USC. No, they are watching a little white girl from Iowa. No tan in the world, no voluptuousness in her body. They are watching that little white girl shoot, jump shots, put buckets up, put a team on her back and become that good old fashioned American underdog story of the white, great white home. She's a white savior. And Caitlin Clark has become the Cinderella of white America. And I'm telling you right now, baby, I'm telling you right now, she's the Taylor Swift of women's basketball. She is the face of basketball in America Mark my word. Caitlin Clark has little freckle-faced Kansas seven-year-old white girl saying, Daddy, I want to play basketball. In Missouri right now in the mountaintops, those hillbillies are coming down, letting their daughters play basketball. Caitlin Clark's jersey is going to be worn by white girls, white boys, white grandmothers, White aunties and uncles, good old boys are going to be wearing good old Caitlin Clark's jersey because Caitlin Clark is the the, the American dream. She's non. She's not. She's not. She's not be no. There's no confrontation. There's not going to be any scandal with Caitlin. Caitlin's not going to be cussing and putting tattoos on herself. She's not going to be twerking on social media. She's not going to be walking around with a thong, showing everybody her. No, no. Caitlin Clark is cookie cutter clean. Every single brand in America is want to go marry themselves up with Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is the darling of marketing in America. My goodness, you can't lose with Caitlin Clark. You can't lose with Caitlin Clark. She's not going to give you some political statement to, to, to disenfranchise any portion of the American audience. Everybody's going to love her. Everybody. Black, white, everybody's going to love Caitlin. And that's why Caitlin Clark is going to be the new face of sports in America. She's the safest bet in the doggone world. If you're going to put money behind somebody as a multi- national corporation sports apparel corporation and you've got to worry about somebody doing something dumb somebody doing something silly and you can say well let's let's just let's just let's just bet it all on caitlin you're guaranteed to have a good five-year run out of that jump shooting little white girl who is not going to do anything but smile and be happy and give you wonderful sound bites and she is going to make anything she touches into gold i guarantee it you might say, well, Dell, she's not going to go change the WNBA. She's going to change the marketing for the WNBA. She's going to change the TV deals for the WNBA. Ice Cube is not a fool. Ice Cube wanted to give her $5 million just to play one season with the big three. But Caitlin, to, to her credit, you don't take the first deal on the table because if he's offering you five million out the door, 20 million is sitting there somewhere. 20 million is sitting there somewhere. He's offering her five million dollars to play one season. Five million! That's her that's your first offer? Whoa, 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 whoa. Five million is your first offer. I'm I'm gonna come back with 25, Ice Cube, and we'll settle somewhere around 20. Because you can actually play, she can actually do both. She can play in the WNBA and in the Big Three because the seasons don't conflict. My goodness, Caitlin Clark is is revisiting the racial divide that is taking place in America in a positive way. But she is she is revisiting it. She is causing people to come 
to see, this is what Caitlyn did. These stars, these entertainers, all of these people came to watch Caitlyn and that good old fashioned Iowa team, that good old white team from Iowa. They, I know they had Stokely, they had that black girl, that had that black pom-pom girl who's instrumental. She was the only person who actually showed up in the finals, her and her and uh, Caitlyn. She was instrumental, absolutely instrumental, fantastic young lady. But Caitlyn made all of those white folks come to watch black people lose. Let me tell you something. These things sound so terrible coming out of our mouths. We, we, oh, I, I have, a, I have a, a, a white associate who says, you know, I hate to hear the victimization that comes out of the mouth of black people. You guys are always victims. I'm not being a victim. I'm identifying the cultural normalities of that penal colony called the United States of America. I'm identifying how you guys function. The UFC, the UFC, what made the UFC popular in America? Are you telling me that those, those fighters in the UFC were the best fighters in the world? Absolutely not. Why were the white fighters making way more money? Chuck, the, Chuck was his name? Chuck the Snowman or what was his name? He, he was making millions of dollars. The Iceman, Chuck the Iceman, forget his last name, millions of dollars. Rampage came in there and bust his beat the I could I knew I could beat up Chuck. I knew I could beat up Chuck. I would beat up Chuck with no training. The reason that it became popular because the UFC became the show of where white guys again were the toughest guys in the game. It was like the old West again with, with the Duke and, and John Wayne coming off his horse and beating up a bunch of guys, one guy just punching everybody in the face. It was it was uh, the Lone Ranger all over again, where the white guy was the hero. And that's what made the UFC popular. Dana White is a genius. Interesting name, Dana White. But he's a genius because what he knew was that white people wanted to see white men win, period. Something that boxing was not able to do for a very, very long time. Not able to do. They're watching blacks and Mexicans beat the snap out of most of the white guys and they weren't able to deal with that until Fury comes along and said and then the same scenario Fury comes along and they're like oh yes the great white hope can't beat Fury he's impossible he's 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 the, he's 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 the, 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 the Paul Bunyan of boxing and so Caitlin has done that Caitlin has managed to to reinvigorate the oldest conversation in America race and to make young white people have a hero again. And, and to make the conservative whites say, oh, this is, this is wonderful, it's wonderful, it's, just, it's amazing, she's, she's a good old Christian girl from Iowa, and she's just gonna, she's just gonna play basketball, we're not gonna have to worry about our children being in, in, uh, you know, uh, inundated with any of this stuff. Any of these things, you know, I, I don't wanna call them out, but these, these things that you guys know that we don't wanna apart, and, and that's what Caitlin represents. Let me see what y'all got to say. Let me see what y'all got to say. <laughs> Sam's like, what the hell is this man on? About? I'm talking about Caitlin Clark, Sam. I'm talking about the correlation between sports and race in America. I am talking about the psychology of the American that stimulates their, their, their turnout for anything, uh, sorry, the white American, for anything that causes the white conversation to rise to the top. Because let's face it, Sam, it's difficult for white people to beat their chest and say white pride. It's hard for you guys to, to stand up and say white power. I know you can't say it. You gotta whisper it amongst the dinner table. But Caitlin, Caitlin allowed you for a moment to stand up there and to feel proud again of being white in America. Let's make America white again. <laughs> Caitlin Clark, and I appreciate the young lady's talent. This is taking nothing away from her talent. She is not doing this on purpose. This is not her role. She's a, just a young white girl in Iowa playing basketball. But what she represents to the white establishment in America is hope. And you are going to see it show up and first of all, of course, in Caitlin Clark's pockets. You're going to see it show up 
on Sports Illustrated, on magazines, people are going to hitch their marketing wagon to Caitlin Clark. I would do it. I would absolutely do it. I would do it. Caitlin Clark will have foundations and Caitlin Clark will have her own brand, her own line. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, she is again the marketing darling of this generation's white America. And it's going to be, and, and you know, just, and just to speak to black people too, we jump on the wagon too now. When we jump on the wagon too. Black folks, you know, most of us are still caught up in this post slave mentality. So, of course, we will jump on Caitlyn's bandwagon much faster than we realize that Caitlyn actually lost two years in a row. Caitlyn actually doesn't have any championships. Black girls have been beating the hell out of Caitlyn from time. But we're not going to think pick that up because we're going to say, no, Caitlyn's a good old-fashioned white girl. We like her too. We love her. And we should love her. There's nothing wrong with her. She's a fantastic young lady. However, there's a lot of bad sisters running around in America playing basketball right now. I, I can't wait to see Juju Watkins next year. I can't wait. And, and, and to be honest with you, Paige Becker from UConn, she might be a better player than Caitlyn. In fact, if Paige was coming out of the draft into the WNBA draft this year, which I believe she is not, she would probably be the number two draft choice. And if she hangs around next year, depending on how good Juju Watkins plays, and if Juju is deciding to stay for her four years, which she should, because the NIL money is crazy, it would be nuts to, to give that up. Paige is probably going to be the number one draft choice. And but Paige could still, Paige still. And just to compare apples to apples, Paige might be the second best white basketball player, female basketball player in America, but she still does not have what Caitlin has. Caitlin has done the near impossible. Paige doesn't have a name like Caitlin Clark. People have hitched their wagon to Caitlin Clark, and for good reason. She's broken records on top of records on top of records. She's a fan fantastic talent she's got ice in her veins she shows up she has she she's never nervous so i understand all of the accolades she's a better shooter than me i can shoot that rock but i ain't gonna mess with Kate, caitlin clark imagine <laughs> she's gonna be in the nba three-point shootout next year i guarantee they're gonna change the rules to make sure caitlin clark can be in that i guarantee i guarantee it i put my money on it I put five good old Canadian dollars on it that Caitlin Clark will be in the NBA three-point shootout next year. It's going to be WNBA and NBA combined, I guarantee it, because it's good television, it's good marketing, it's good for basketball, and it's what the people want to see. So, I don't know what you think about it, but I think Caitlin Clark, as the title says, is going to be the new face of sports in America, at least for the next couple of years. For the end of this season, into the next season, people are already saying, let Caitlin Clark try out for the NBA. People are saying that. People are people who don't know, but they're saying it. Oh man, Caitlin could probably play in the NBA. Caitlin is like Cheryl Miller. Caitlin is no dog on Cheryl Miller. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kaylin is no dog on Cheryl Miller. Let's just stop the nonsense right now. But people are saying that because that's what happens when white people get to a level of excellence. Other whites put them in a, in a position where they feel that they can do things that they can, where they have, they have discovered things that they haven't. Who's that football player from San Francisco, the big old boy from San Francisco that they said he discovered the fade? Huh? They said he discovered the fade. I forget his name because his name is irrelevant to me, right? Taylor Swift's boyfriend. He said he discovered the fade because he gets a fade. These kind of concepts, these kind of things, they happen all the time. But Caitlyn is that level of star. She's a star. She's not just a great player. She's a star. They chose her. She is the chosen one. She has been anointed to be a star. And because she's a star, she is going to be ridden like a star by every individual who has the good sense, just like my boy Ice Cube, to say, hey, I'm hitching my wagon to Caitlin Clark. Why wouldn't I? I? There's no losses here. I cannot lose with Caitlin being at the helm 
of my marketing machine, being the face of my of my of my particular product. I can't lose. I can't lose. Let me see what y'all got to say. Um, it says, well, it's a better face. <laughs> that's a better face than the fake James. Hey, you see, and that's what it is. Honestly, like LeBron, I, I I'm not. A, I'm I am an appreciator of LeBron. I appreciate his talent. His is. His resume is imp un unimpeachable. It's impeachable, rather. It's an unimpeachable, impeachable. I don't know what, how that word goes. It's impeachable. Um, you can't take any, anything away from Le what LeBron has done. But if I am a marketing mogul, I, I'm, I'm careful of what I attach myself to with LeBron. You know, LeBron, sometimes he's a little bit of a loose cannon. He's definitely a megalomaniac. He definitely has, has his eyes on his own brand. And right now he's got his eyes on making sure Bronny is an NBA player, which will happen, by the way. Bronny will be in the NBA next year. He won't be drafted. There's nobody stupid enough to draft a kid with a heart problem. He's going to probably become a free agent, right? And uh, he'll he'll be he'll be moved around. And the Lakers will give him a, a, a contract because LeBron wants it, and that's how it's going to work. Ain't nobody wasting a draft choice on Bronny. Bronny scored four points a game, and has a heart problem. But LeBron James is LeBron James, but I have a feeling, and I have a feeling, for the next two years, until this Caitlyn girl actually has a whole season under her belt, we're going to see some Caitlyn Clark pictures everywhere we can see them. She's going to be in fashion, she's going to be in cosmetics, she's going to be in sports, she's going to be everywhere you can slap a picture of a smiling skinny white girl, you're going to see Caitlyn Clark. And this is the this is the worst part. If Caitlin Clark actually has the goods to drop thirty balls in the in the WNBA too, oh boy, oh boy, if she's able to put up numbers in the WNBA too, like she's putting up numbers in college, right? Some of these percentages though are a little bit, you know. Caitlin's got to be. He's, she's a volume shooter. They're giving a, they're giving her a green light. And then what position is she going to play in the WNBA? She has to play the point guard. Right? And she's a fantastic passer. We know she can pass the ball. But can she handle the pressure of under NBA point, NBA athletic point guards? And can she deal with the length of some of those bigger guards? You know, Diana Taurasi, which is, she's a hater, an absolute hater. I don't like Diana Taurasi. But Diana Taurasi mentioned, oh, yeah? Well, wait till you come to the NBA, WNBA and you deal with us grown women out here, Caitlin. Well, you know, Diana Taurasi with her old self is going to have to put her money where her mouth is because... I don't know if she can run around with that girl. But let's see what we got to say here. She ain't ugly. No, she's not ugly. Caitlyn's not. She's plain. You know what I'm saying? She's just, she's wonder bread and butter. That's She's not even jam. She's not ugly. She's not ugly. She's not ugly at all. There's nothing ugly about her. She, just, she is the, the quintessential um, girl next door in America. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with her. In fact, if you give her the right sitcom, she she could be the the love interest of of uh, of, of any romantic comedy, because she's not ugly. She's a decent looking girl, brunette, fair of complexion, skinny. You know, not my cup of tea, but I'm sure many young men in America have have no issue dealing with Caitlin Clark. And I and as I was looking up. Um, uh, the, uh, the capacity to put one of these pictures up, I think Caitlin got a boo. And I think he's a good-looking young fella, good-looking white boy, got muscles and everything. I, I think she's good. I don't think she cares whether or not we think she's good-looking. I think she's already got herself a boo. And if that boy is smart, he better hold on to that billion-dollar ticket. He better hold on with all his life. But, oh, hold on, young fella. Hold on, because Caitlin, you don't got to do nothing. You, you can be Stedman to Caitlin's, to Caitlin's basketball career. Goodness gracious. So, what you say? Yep, at best. My boy goes, she ain't fine either, though. <laughs> ain't nobody ever convinced me that she's going to be fine. But listen to me. You put, you, put a little, you put a little hair products in her, okay? You get them girls to, 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 to blow up her lips a little bit. She, you know? She go, she she be looking like a Kardashian before you know it. That's what everybody looks like now. Everybody looks like a Kardashian. Even those little gay boys were putting themselves together. Everybody looks like a Kardashian. That's the look now. Everybody wants to look like a Persian woman. It's crazy. A 
Persian woman with a with a Ghanaian woman's behind. That's what everybody wants to look like right now. I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna do that to Caitlyn. I hope Caitlyn doesn't do that to herself. But yeah, man, she's the she's the, again the quintessential girl next door, and she's she's marketing. She's marketable enough for anything, anything, unless it's male underwear. But she's 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 definitely gonna get her opportunities to market just about everything, even movies. I was thinking today. In my crazy imagination, imagine Caitlin Clark and Mac McClung in a movie. Throw in, throw in Kyrie Irving in there, and call it hmm, the the sequel of White Men Can't Jump. Just just do it one more time. Caitlin, Kyrie, in his Uncle Drew outfit, and Mac McClung show up somewhere in South South somewhere in California. Scamming people at three three point shots and and pickup games. That'd be a fantastic movie. I'd watch it White men can jump. That's what you should call it white men can jump. Oh, yeah That's what you should call it and Mac McClung out there dunking on people my goodness Caitlin out there hitting threes Well, listen that something would happen Kyrie Irving could be the uncle Drew who discovers them and trying to get them to the NBA trying to get them a shot and here we go Boom you got something I reserve the rights to that, Disney. That you gotta come see me, Disney. Don't just steal my idea. This is my show. I've got I've got the rights to that. White men can't jump. Somebody write it down. Somebody write it down. Branton said it first. White men can jump. Coming to a Disney channel near you soon. But listen, I'm very excited about what sports looks like. I have never spoken about basketball on a female perspective so much. There's so many good girls in basketball right now. So many good girls in basketball. And basketball for women is about to take off finally. The WNBA, finally, that, that charity league that the NBA has been carrying on their back might make some money. Apparently, Caitlin's earnings in the, in the WNBA next year is, could be something like $76,000. Her NIL deal, and for those who don't know what the NIL is, it is essentially the capacity for college players, amateur players, to make money off of their image and their likeness. And um, this is taking place now in college basketball where these young people are not just being given a so-called free education, but they're also allowed to be share, to share revenue with the universities who sell their jerseys, who sell, um, who make money off of their image. And so Caitlin, um, un I believe she's doing somewhere around five to 10 mil already. Somebody can correct that. I heard Angel Reese is doing at least 2 million with her NIL deals. So people are making money, unless you're of course a foreign student where they jacking you up. My boy Edie made no money. The Canadian made no money. And this is what I said to Canadians. Stop telling these NCAA schools to give you a, 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 a student visa tell them to give you a work permit get a work permit tell them to get you a work permit and go to school for free get a work permit so that you can take advantage of the nil deals because that's the issue you don't have a tax number and so you they can't pay you imagine this kid who's going to be a lottery pick millions of dollars he would have made in college already and he couldn't get paid he couldn't he couldn't monopolize on that because he's a foreign student. Nah, 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 that's a ripoff. They stole money from that kid. You gotta get a work permit now. Don't give me no basketball scholarship. Get me a work permit and I'll be over there and I'm gonna do my thing and I'll go to school for free too. But get me a work permit so that my NIL money can come to me. I need a social security number so I can make some dollars, some good old fashioned greenbacks in the United States of America. I know they're not greenbacks, but we still call them greenbacks here in Canada. Although I know greenbacks mean something completely different to you guys. Listen, that's my, that's my, that's the spiel for, that's the spiel that I got. It says, hey, um, that shirt is very, what was it? That my shirt, my sh listen, I'm gonna tell you about this shirt. I was out looking to see if I could find something different because I was going to a function and I said, let me go buy myself a shirt, right? I got a lot of shirts, but I, you know, as a single guy, you don't feel like ironing 
you got to iron the shirt and all kind of stuff. So I said, let me go see if I can find a good shirt. So I went looking in all these stores, all these fancy stores. You know where I found this fantastic shirt at? Huh? This wonderful shirt. Uh, you know what I found it? Guess. Somebody guess. 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 Mark's Work Warehouse, baby. That's right. Mark, I found me a flannel. Mark's Work Warehouse. Out here looking blue collared. That's right. Some of them are really ugly. But I found this one. Match it with a pair of blue jeans. Put on some 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 cool boots. Boy, I was looking, I was looking like the cat's meow out there. I was looking sharp as a tack. Mark's Work Warehouse. That's right. But when you got it, you got it. When you, when you can make it happen, you can make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Some people can put it together from any situation. Some people cannot. I'm that kind of guy. I can kind of put it together. You know, God bless me like that. I'm, I'm, I, I'm not rich, but I carry a certain rich flair. You know, it's the Trinidadian in me. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the Trini in me. It's the Trini in me. But thank you very much for the compliment. Um, yeah, it, you know, it, it gives us a little flair. It gives us a little flavor here. Um, it says, how do you get your work permit in Canada. If you're a Canadian and an American school is trying to um, uh, is trying to hire you, there's actually, or American company rather, is trying to hire you. There's actually two ways. Um, you, there's the NAFTA scenarios where essentially, if you have a particular NAFTA trade, uh, you could potentially uh, come in that way. Um, otherwise, you got to get uh, you got to go, you got to do it a couple of different ways. Now, this might be the issue: the the treaty might have to be amended so that these college players have the capacity to come in because they're high school kids, right? They're going to be high school kids. So, how is a high school kid going to get a work permit in America? That is for lawyers to discuss. That is that is that is out of my scenario. But as a as a Canadian. Um, I can, for example, I can come work in America as a principal because I have a teaching degree. Uh, you know, I have, I have a, a, a background in education, so I can come and work as a principal or, or something. I can come also as a seminarian. I can be a pastor or the head of a seminary because I have a, my religious credentials also. So those are things that allow me specifically, but there's a list, there's a NAFTA list that allows Canadians to go down there. The, the universities are going to have a, 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 I don't think they're going to be able to use that because these kids are coming there at 18 years old with no real NAFTA experience. So they're going to have to have some different caveat where they actually do get them probably a student visa. And then after the student visa, apply for them to have a work permit while they're already in America. That might be the way to do it. So they have a combo of two things. Probably got to do both. Again, the extra mile that you have to go to in order that these kids are not because these Canadian kids are going to these American universities and they're showing out. They're going to the NBA. And if you want a kid to hang around and play in college for any longer than one year or two years, you got to give him his money, man. Can't keep that NIL money from him. Got to give him his money. Or you've got to put it in trust for him or something. But these, these schools are basically ripping these guys off. And Edie, the kid from Purdue, the center from Purdue, never got a cent of his NIL money. Imagine! That guy's probably owed hundreds and thousands of dollars. That's terrible. Back to Caitlin Clark. Um, Caitlin is going to be uh, in in your face for the next for the next twelve months easily until that next until she gets drafted, which she probably uh, will go number one. Um, is she going to sign with with Ice Cube? Caitlin, of course you're going to sign with Ice Cube. Of course you are. Why would you give away five million dollars? And you know it's going to be more. Like I said, why would you give that money? Why would you leave that money on the table? Like I don't understand this. Like, why would you leave that money on the table? Don't leave that money on the table. Open the door for other women and br break the door open. No other women are playing in the in the in the big three. Open that door for them, Caitlin, and take your bag. Absolutely. And stay in stay in America. They don't want you going over there and getting the same trouble that, that, that Brittany Griner got in Russia, catching hell, going on. No, take your little money. Keep your little money. Go out there and buy yourself some, 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 some fields out there in Iowa. Grow some corn. You know what I'm saying? Get a cottage for you and the boo and stay in America. Take Ice Cube's money. $76,000 of WNBA money? Come on. 
Yes, there's going to be other advertisers, but that's the first one on the table. Five million to play basketball in a men's league. Take it and run. Ice Cube, you got to lift that money up a little bit, young fella. Caitlin, let me be your manager. I make sure Ice Cube gave you 20 million. I'll take, I'll take, I'll, I'm only, I'm only taking 10%. I'm only taking a tithe. I'm only taking a tithe. But Ice Cube got to give you 20 million for that. And he doesn't have to be all on the front end, Ice Cube. We'll take some on the back end, okay? We also will take um, um, some some money on all of the f other females that come into the league. We'll, 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 we, we can do it a lot of ways. We can structure that deal in a lot of ways, Ice Cube. We can make sure that that money is, is, is there. You know, we don't want to break you. We want you to make money too. But we want to make sure me and Kaylin, I mean Kaylin, I mean me and Kaylin get, get, get her money too. But there's too much money to be left on the table for Caitlin to say no to Ice Cube's deal. Absolutely. I'll start watching the big three. Imagine the amount of people. And Ice Cube's not stupid. Ice Cube knows that those white viewers are going to fill up the stadium watching Caitlin Clark play basketball in a three-on-three -three league. This is about race in America. And when you have race properly handled in America, properly understood in America, you can make money. And Ice Cube's not a dummy. You can make money. What do you think's going on with hip-hop right now? White people, you guys are the ones paying for hip-hop. You guys are the ones who love hip-hop. Drake's concerts in Toronto, you don't see a bunch of brothers walking up to Drake. No, you see you see white people coming down from Muskoka and coming down from the hills coming to, coming to see Drake. That's who... We'll listen to Drake on their dog on radio. We'll listen to Drake on a streaming channel. We're not going to Drake concerts. Many of us, I'm not going to Drake's concert. I have no interest in going to Drake's concert. Drake's concerts are, are attended by white audiences. And when white folks pick up black culture, that's when it becomes, that's when it makes money. And Caitlin is now the new shining star of black culture. And basketball is black culture. We made it. We made it real. That's right. We went. You took it from. You you gave us peach baskets, and we gave you slam dunks. And now Caitlyn has risen to the top. Fantastic for her. Kudos to her and her family. Wonderful. But let's 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 be honest. Let's be honest. Caitlyn Clark is going to be the face of sports because she is a star white basketball player she might not even be the best white basketball player but she is female but she's a star she's an absolute star nothing can nothing can can cause her not to be a star losing didn't stop her from being a star she's a star she's a fantastic talent and and that's going to make money that's going to make sense and that's going to make people come to the table to see Caitlin Clark play what else you got to say that's the Elvis Presley argument exactly the, the Robeson argument. <laughs> Ice Cube with Trump in 2024. Let me, let, let, can, can, can we talk about this Trump thing at the same time while I mix the Caitlin Clark thing? You think I can do it? I can do it. I can, I can absolutely do it. In the midst of Donald Trump's rise in, in, the, in, the, in the awareness of this new election, and at the same time, Caitlin Clark rising up from 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 the countryside of white America this is this is a similar story as I as I tried to do before to combine the whole thing with with Diddy's nonsense that he's going on because there's a difference between racism and classism right racism and classism and and Donald what what Donald and Diddy are dealing with is they're dealing with their classism being attacked by the legal systems of America. But let's leave Diddy aside for the moment. But Donald and Caitlin rising at this time are extremely significant because there is a new awakening and a new awareness that we have seen from Donald's first um, term as president that is still very much alive in America to the point that Donald is not even dealing with race at the same way he was dealing with it at the, at the beginning. Because so many black and Latinos have somehow um, ingratiated themselves with Donald's 
next rise in power because they see this absenteeism of representation from the Biden administration anyway. And they see Donald as an outsider. So now Donald has, has the capacity to rise to the top. At the same time, Caitlin Clark is rising to the top. And now from the American middle class, uneducated point of view, they are seeing an America that they've been waiting to see again. An America run by a strong white male. An America run by a voice that speaks to the, their anti immigration mentalities and the, and their 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 mentalities of, of personal prejudice and their their quiet the quiet squeaking of individual white pride which they believe built America and then they see Caitlin and they see Caitlin as another representation of white greatness and white excellence and I'm telling you these things are culturally walking holding hands in different silos but they are holding hands nonetheless. And, and so this is not coincidental that Caitlin is now answering the call that many white people have in America of seeing greatness in white people. It's, it's not, it's not, there's, there's nothing um, strange about it. Absolutely not strange about it. And of course, again, there are many black people on the cusp of, of of being Uncle Tom's, who do not identify uh, the racial significance, but see it as progress for themselves somehow, somehow. They see these things as, as, as potential progress for themselves because maybe they've classified themselves in a place of classism, where we have the ice cubes and individuals like that who might say they are pro-Donald. And where people are saying, well, Ice Cube's pro-Trump because Ice Cube is dealing on a different level. He's dealing on a classism level. And yes, sometimes they find themselves sitting down having conversations with us common folks about issues of race. But really, their issues are not just subjugated to those of just racial things. They are speaking from a classism level and they are being dealt with on a level that is much higher than the average black American that, 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 that we see. So a lot. All right. That's it for me. Um, the spiel, man. The spiel. I, I've, got a, I've got a young lady. Uh, her name is Jody Bent. I did an Instagram with her last night. She's a, she's a relationship. She has a relationship show. We're about to come on and do once a week um, a relationship show talking about divorce, talking about marriage in, in cultural sectors. You know, things like, for example, uh, why the Christian Protestant and the black Christian and black people, all of those particular categories, three different categories, but all of those categories lead the charge in divorce. It's terrible. It's terrible that our that our black um, our black marriage marriages fail, whether they're religious, whether they're secular, they fail. It's terrible that they do. And uh, we're just going to be having those kind of conversations. They're funny. They're engaging. Look out for those. Um, I don't know what, what name we're going to give that show, but it's coming soon. So hopefully you guys will have some fun with that. And of course, I'll still be coming on here with the Shiloh Institute, still coming on here with the Real Spiel, and still coming on here with other content that you guys would like. Okay, so God bless you. Love, peace, and hair grease. This is your brother from another mother up here in the great white north. I'm the king of the north, baby. I'm up here back in Canada. I was I was hanging around with you, you, folk, you southerners down there for a while. I had a good time in America, but I wasn't making any money. I had to get out of there. I had to get out of there, baby. I have to get out of there. Y'all were strangling me out there. I, I, I have to come back here and, and, and work out my salvation with fear and trembling. All right? But love you guys, Miss Ann and everybody on the spiel. Really, really nice to hear from all of you and see all of you. Um, who's, who's, who's telling me? Who's saying something? Let me, let me see. I, come on. Cause I'm, I'm getting of an age where, you know, you, I can't see this and I, and I want to see. This guy is definitely a negotiator. Thank you very much there, brother. I, I, I have, I have, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know if you're a brother or a sister there, but I, I have the capacity to negotiate. You know, I've got the gift of gab and whatnot. But really, I just love you guys on the spiel. I love to be able to communicate authentic content and speak about it in a way that's passionate to me. I wish I really could come on as often as I really want to. I really want to hit this thing every single day, but I want to have good things to say. Right? I just don't want to be a, a show where I'm just talking foolishness all the time, although I could do that too. 
God bless you. We'll talk very soon. It's Del K. Brereton. This is the real spiel. Caitlin, I'm about to I'm about to buy me an Iowa t-shirt. I'm, I'm jumping on the bandwagon, Caitlin. I'm going to buy me an Iowa t-shirt. Uh, don't, don't leave me behind. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. I haven't been out here so long, I don't know how to turn the dog on. Oh, there's my ex.